Good evening and thank you for joining us on this edition of the program Capital Market. I'm Temple Ashadjo. It's of course the last edition for this month and of course the very last one for the quarter one of the year. Well, let's kick off the show with some news right now. Um, we know that the SEC, which is the Securities and Exchange Commission, this week extended the deadline for the discontinuance of the issuance of dividend warrants till December the 31st, 2019. In a statement, the SEC explains that the objective is to enable relevant players to deliberate on and address all outstanding issues. Now, while encouraging shareholders to enroll in the e-dividend program of the Commission, the SEC notes that the initiative remains critical to the complete elimination of the phenomenon of unclaimed dividends. And of course, this week was Global Morning Week the world over, and the Nigerian Stock Exchange was a major participant in the commemoration of this course. With the theme, Learn, Save, and Earn, the NSE, between Monday, March the 25th, and Friday, March the 29th, 2019, held a series of educational programs with students, teaching children and youths about the importance of financial literacy. In 2018, we were able to reach 15,116 students in 2018. This represents a three, over 300% increase from last year's figure of 4,107. Um, thus bringing the global figure since we started this project in 2014 to 22,286. At the Nigerian Stock Exchange, we are building a financially savvy generation by introducing young people to life-changing and impactful programs. And of course, one of the programs that we've talked about is the national essay competition that we've done. We've been doing this since uh, in the last 18 years. And we've had children like you, students like you, come to win you know, various prizes, which include scholarship, which include shares, and the rest of it. If you reduce your expenses side, this difference between your income and your work expenses is becoming what? wider then you have more you have what excess money that you can use for either speculative purposes or for you to invest into your future again what is also important after this is that you now have to start looking for a multiple streams of income now you have a source of income the moment you start reducing your expenses you are creating excess money for yourself that is where you can invest that money so that money is coming from your primary source, our money is coming from the other secondary source. And the more sources of income that you have, the more successful that person is going to be, the more financially stable that individual is going to be. And the Association of uh, Stockbroking Houses of Nigeria is now to be known as the Association of Securities Dealing Houses of Nigeria. Of course, this follows the unveiling of a new logo at a session yesterday in Lagos. Now, the president of the body, Mr. Patrick Ezegu, explains uh, the broadening horizon of the markets as the motive behind the name change. Let's listen. There's always something in the name. Somebody there. Over time, we have been answering stockbrokers. And it appears that have been devoted us into you know, making us think that everything we have to do is all these stocks. But today, the market is wider than that. And all the products that are being sold across the financial markets are securities in the first place. And we're prepared to now move into that space to play along that broad spectrum. That's why we try to change our name, to reflect a broader you know, perspective. And now a bit of earnings. A lot of them actually trickled into the markets yesterday. We start with our tier two lender, Wema Bank. Wema Bank's earnings for the period ended December 2018 came in impressive on Friday uh, with a top line of 71 billion naira after a push up in profit before tax to 4.8 billion naira from 3 billion naira in 2017. With a 47.5% rise in profit, the regional lender looks to pay out three cobo in dividend, having seen dividend yield rose 3.9% in the calendar year. And of course, Unilever PLC, consumer goods giant uh, Unilever on Friday also reported a 9.05% increase in revenue for the period 
ended uh, December 2018. Uh, that's the calendar year in view as the pre-tax profits surged 19% within the period. Against the backdrop of low dividend payouts in recent years, the home and personal care firm is proposing a dividend of 1 naira 50 koboto shareholders, having seen a 41.61% rise in profits after tax to some 10.55 billion naira in the period under review. And for the last one on our radar, we've got Total PLC, leading oil and gas producer Total, posted a top line of 307 billion naira as profit before tax jumped 2.5% uh, from 11 billion naira in the base year to 12 naira in 2018. Despite a fall in post-tax profit, the oil and gas giant is proposing a dividend of 17 naira to its shareholders. So now let's look at the uh, weekly uh, performance of our markets. We track the equities market, the unlisted securities segment, and of course the debt market. We started with the stock market all share index for this week. Uh, of course, reduced by some 0.31% to 31,041.42. Equity capitalization also actually uh, closed at 11.672 trillion naira after rising uh, by some uh, percentage points uh, in contrast to the movements that we saw in the key benchmark indices. Activity level came in with a volume of 2.62 billion ordinary units of shares traded for this week in total, while that was valued at just 12.794 billion naira. And we saw 15,558 deals for this week. On the sectoral front, uh, only three key sectors managed to gain uh, for this week compared to what we saw last week. The banking segment was down 11.81%. Consumer goods segment of the market in appreciated some 7.56%, while the industrial goods segment of the market rose the most by 30.78% on account of gains we saw around Dangode Cement and CCNN. Uh, CCNN's earnings actually came in this week. And we saw a couple of other earnings in that, on that uh, side of the market as well. Better Glass and, of course, BOC Gases are some of the companies that all re in released their earnings for 2018 uh, into the market for that period and shot up the, inc uh, the number that we have against the industrial goods segment of the market. The insurance side of the market was actually negative, 2.52%, while oil and gas moved up for the week by 9.98%. Over to the unlisted securities markets where things were also positive. The USI was positive by some 0.96% margin, closing at 757.75 with a market capitalization that increased uh, to 544.39 billion naira. We saw volume for this week at 764,291 compared to what we had last week. This is lower at a value of uh, 138.15 million. Naira. Deals for this week was 38, and we saw trading around some 10 securities out of the entire uh, 38 securities tradable on that market. Now we'll quickly review the uh, debt side of the markets, talk about the bond side of things, where we saw a uh, mixed trading uh, session for this week around the bonds, federal government bonds, uh, 23rd of February 2028 uh, security was actually heavily uh, priced this week. 99, 99 Naira, uh, 51 Kobo was the rate it closed at yesterday, and we saw a whole lot of uh, uh, demands around the uh, short side of the curve yesterday. Uh, the deals, for the number of deals we saw was 41, valued at 14.75 uh, billion Naira. For the Treasury bill side of things, we saw uh, interest also quite mixed at that, uh, the uh, T bill side of the market. But in total, we saw two, uh, 323 deals yesterday, uh, valued at some 201.19 uh, billion naira. And now the Association of Securities Dealing Houses of Nigeria yesterday held one of its annual meetings in Lagos. And, and the panel discussion staged at the event focused on financial inclusion. And the panelists, who are all known figures in the market, discussed the need to leverage technology uh, for more of retail participation. Let's listen. So about 
two years ago, actually two years precisely, the debt management introduced the Federal Government Savings Bond, and the main objective was around financial inclusion. It was targeted at the retail investor, so the amounts were small, the process was fairly simple. So after two years, I'm talking March 2017 to March 2019, uh, we've been able to raise 11.773 billion from 14,703 investors. Okay, so that puts um, into perspective, I should drive home some of the points Dr. Shamsuddin uh, made. Both the amount and the numbers are extremely small when we compare it to the population. If we say, for instance, there are 70 million active taxpayers, then 14,000 you know, participants over two years is rather small. So something uh, is wrong, and there's quite um, a bit of spending around publicizing that product. So that is small. Uh, I'll share the example of the Sukuk as well, where uh, the retail investor was also given some priority. So the first time uh, we had, and this is after roadshows in about six cities, we had less than 1,000 retail investors. Okay, this time around, in um, 2018, we had slightly less than 2,000 investors. Okay, so that means uh, really uh, the financial inclusion is not yet where it ought to be because there was a lot of um, uh, publicity around it, including all kinds, including vernacular, radio, TV. So something is wrong. means we need to do a lot more, but there is um, potential. We've done a few things to try to move that agenda forward. Uh, the first uh, is in the area of uh, allowing uh, members to now support uh, sub brokers uh, we have rules around that we've also introduced the concept of representative offices uh, where um, you know people that are not necessarily uh, qualified individuals can participate and be supervised uh, by our members <clears throat> we're now working on a broker to banker initiative to take advantage of the banking network and allow brokers to reach there are about 35 million uh, people that are banked uh, right now. Or, and then another perspective that we've uh, taken is products. So we've uh, worked with the DMO to introduce uh, the savings bond. The savings bond is actually designed to be retail, uh, 5,000 Naira and a uh, maximum of 50,000 Naira. I think we need to just do a better job of reaching a lot more people and I think the way to do it is uh, digitization because you have so many people that have uh, you know uh, cell phones and so to the extent that we can reach them in a meaningful way uh, we should really consider that there are other products that are designed to support retail that we've also uh, uh, focused on and supported the mutual fund trading platform is one that we recently launched uh, in partnership with Ashon and uh, 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 Fman and other people that are focused in this, in this area. And the whole idea is to get a lot more people using uh, mutual funds and using a broker network to distribute these uh, mutual funds. You include people. Uh, what do you sell to them? Um, you need to have products and the right products are very important. Uh, and so we need to think about how do we uh, build products, how do you deliver those products to the people, how do you sell it to them, uh, and then the issue of uh, uh, literacy comes into perspective. So you have the inclusion, you have the product, are they aware, do they understand what the value of the product is? Uh, and so also that leads us to the value of the product, what are you selling, what is the need for the individual or to, for the uh, investor? Does it see value in what you're selling? Now, in all of this, um, if you walk back to the time that we had a very strong market back in the day when you had uh, trading done on an average of $100 million a day back in 06, 07, um, what was driving that market then was credit, bank credit. So if you look at the financial statements of banks today and compare to uh, 2006, 2007, what you have seen is that the pattern of earning of income is slightly different. There was a lot of income coming from fees and uh, interest income coming from this capital market that is brokers. They loaned out money to brokers to do proprietary trade. Uh, brokers also directly or indirectly loaned out to individuals to trade. 
but then the banks also did extend credit to uh, investors directly through margin loans. To well, we'll take a break now. When we come back, we'll review the impacts of rates cuts in NPR on both the Ghana and Nigerian markets. Stay with us. Welcome back to the program. It's Capital Market Live on Channels Television. Now, this week saw a whole lot of activities, a whole lot of events. And, of course, one of the critical ones for us here in the financial market and, of course, the capital market space is the review of the uh, MPR, the monetary policy rates, which the Monetary Policy Committee of the Central Bank revised by some uh, 50 basis points from 14% to 13.5%. Now, due to the kind of impact that that has now seemingly created in the Ghanaian market, uh, some analysts and, of course, traders here are worried about the kind of influence or effect it will create on the local currency, that's the Naira. Now, and, of course, that's the fact that uh, the same thing had played out in Ghana. So, we now want to, to understand this better. We've been joined now by uh, Labi, Abiola, Labi Kennedy Abiola, who is a Ghana-based uh, businessman and founder of Bespoke Business Consulting uh, in Accra, Ghana. Mr. Abiola, thanks a great deal for joining us this evening on the program. Hi, um, thank you very much for having me. And so, um, thank you for your video. Right. So uh, let's talk about the uh, rate cuts that we saw in Ghana. Uh, a lot of people kind of believe that that was what impacted on the CDs in terms of the pressure that we now see around the CD. Is that correct or not? Um, well, it's exactly a perception, and um, I think it's, it's better we put that in, in, in the correct uh, perspective. Right. Um, I think early January, there was um, an announcement about the NPR, um, the reduction from 25.5% to 22.5%, that's 200 uh, business points. And um, people were actually happy, and um, people were encouraged that things were balance of and there will be an economic growth and development. But before I go further, uh, there are other fundamentals that actually affect the Ghana city. Beyond what people expect from the reduction um, in the, 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 the manager, uh, management policy rate, we have some other issues that actually affect the city. It's not only the, the NPR. Now, we are trying to make people understand that these other factors can have a major role, and can play a major role in, 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 in affecting the currency of the, of the country, in this case, the Ghana cities. Um, at the point when, when the announcement was made, um, there are other factors that affected it. Example was the IMF um, pulling out of um, Ghana because they actually provided about $1 billion um, a program for the economic stability of, of Ghana for, about three, for, for a period of three years. And uh, it has come to a point where they are supposed to make a review uh, and see if they actually achieve their aims and objectives before, before pulling out. Um, during those periods, there are speculations that um, Ghana will not be able to maintain the economic um, stability it has now, because if the IMF is pull out, they will be changed. Um, at the point, the period about three years ago, where the period when IMF actually put compliances, put structures in place to make sure that uh, the economic group, we, we were not, uh, the, the, the politicians, the governments were not able to manipulate anything, which means they are laid down rules and regulations, which you have to adhere to. You understand? Now, at that point, you are not able to take any decision except to go through the laid down rules and regulations by IMF. Now, this caused a huge speculation because people are thinking now that they cannot trust the government to manage the economy because the, um, the IMF is pulling us. That's one of the major um, reasons why the city actually fell for about 12% between these two months, that's between February and the end of March. So it's not basically, yeah, 
So it's not basically due to the uh, rate cuts that the uh, Ghana Central Bank had done. Well, the Nigerian, mm. the Nigerian CBN now, or the Nigerian Central Bank has actually now done the, uh, a similar thing by reducing uh, the NPR by some 50 basis points. Uh, but of course, yeah. there's been some kind of publication analysis, of course, that we won't go the way of Ghana, perhaps due to some of these uh, reasons that you've just explained. Instead, we should go the way of uh, Egypt. Uh, do you mm -hmm. agree with that view? Oh, yes, I actually agree with you. I actually agree, I agree with you, certainly. Um, the reason is that we are, we are, not, um, we are not in the same um, economic space. Ghana is actually import-driven. Um, our commodities, our consumables are actually imported. So we have more imports than exports. This also creates demand for the USD, for, for the foreign currency, and affects the, the stability of the city. But Nigeria has taken a very bold step by banning the import of rice, and some other commodities, and actually trying to create agriculture to help grow those activities. So at this point, the NPR will actually have an effect. You understand? A positive effect, a effect on the economy of Nigeria. And honestly, I would, I would really applaud the government of uh, Buhari, uh, Mr. the president, President Buhari, because they are just trying to create a kind of uh, leeway for other um, African presidents to follow. This, this, this said. Egypt also has that kind of economic space like, like Nigeria. Do you understand? Now there is inflow of funds, inflow of investment in Nigeria. And at this point when the elections are over, people are trying to make sure that they are able to invest in certain spaces to get returns. So at this point, it is, it is uh, on, on the right side to compare the, 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 the economic uh, factors of Nigeria to that of Egypt, not that of Ghana. So, to, so, so tomorrow we'll be seeing the end of the Q2 with your uh, confidence in what the uh, monetary authorities and of course the fiscal authorities have now done here in Nigeria. Uh, where do you see the economy, the Nigerian market anyways, uh, going forward, especially in Q2 when we have a lot of expectations, the passage of our budget, of course we expect more data, uh, the Q1 GDP data is expected to come in inflation for March and a whole wrapped a whole lot of things uh, that, I, that I expected. What's your uh, view of Q2 or your outlook for the Q2 going forward? Okay, so now the Q2 going forward is to make sure that um, the, 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 um, the economic team of Nigeria should actually manage the economy very well. Now there's, there's a new way for us to, to make sure that there's efficient economic growth and development. There's penetration of um, investment by foreign investors. And one thing I would, I, would, I would like the government of Nigeria to do is to make sure they, they provide an economic friendly investment um, uh, avenue so that investments um, by foreign investors can come in and do so much to help the growth of, of, of Nigeria. So I'm, I'm very positive because honestly, to let the, the, the layman understand what this NPR is and how it affects them personally, I would just like to say it's, it's just an, it, uh, like a simple way of saying um, the central banks manage the liquidity of, of, of the economy to make sure it facilitates growth and development. When I say liquidity, I'm, I'm basically in this, in this regard saying that the effects could be cash, it could be credit, it could be mutual funds, it could, it could be uh, um, checks and all that to make sure that there's stability and enough penetration in, 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 in the economy of Nigeria. And so how I'm very, very positive. Right, and how, on a final note, how bullish are you about the West African uh, markets? Because uh, Nigeria and, of course, Ghana, we're both in West Africa. That's in 10 seconds, please. Yeah, um, well, the African market is, is, a, is a very big market, but we are not actually utilizing it. There is no cooperation. The, the agreement they are supposed to sign, even the most populous country in Africa has not signed it. You understand? And you see, this is what will drive economic integration and development. So this, when taken seriously, by the government of um, the, uh, the African descent, then would we'll make sure is to make sure there's a bit of growth and development in, in Africa. Mr. Labi Kennedy Abiola, thanks a great deal for your time. He is the founder of Biscope, Bespoke uh, Business Consultant based in Accra, yeah. Ghana. He is actually a Nigerian. Well, on that note, we'll draw the curtain on the show. That's it for this weekend. Thanks for being a major part of it. I'm Temple Ashadu. I'll see you again next time. Bye for now.